Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to be clarifying the definition of matching, as well as some special types of matchings in graph theory. This is a viewer requested video, Ant Eater 23 asked about matchings, complete matchings, and perfect matchings in bipartite graphs. For starters, we're gonna ditch the bipartite graph part of that question, because any graph with edges can have a matching, not just bipartite graphs. He also asks whether matchings are sets or graphs, and there's certainly some room for confusion there, because it's pretty likely you'll see the term matching used to refer to a particular type of edge set, as well as seeing this used to refer to a subgraph induced by those special edge sets. So they're very strongly related, but uh, we'll, we'll clear it all up in this lesson. Let's just get into it. For starters, of course, we will begin with a graph, and then we'll talk all about matchings. Matchings are also sometimes called independent edge sets, which might give you a good idea what a matching is. So here is our graph. Let's go ahead and label the vertices A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let me redraw that F. I didn't like that one. Here we are. F. Beautiful F. That's a really good F. So a lot of you are probably already familiar with independent vertex sets. An independent vertex set is just a set of vertices, no two of which are adjacent. For example, an independent vertex set in this graph is the set containing A, D, and F. No two of these vertices, A, D, or F, are adjacent to each other. A matching is the same type of thing, which is why it's also called an independent edge set. An independent edge set, or a matching, is a set of edges where no two edges in the set are adjacent. And remember that we say two edges are adjacent, like these two here, if they share a common end vertex. Now, for the sake of this lesson, we're going to call them matchings, not independent edge sets, because matchings sounds cooler and it's quicker. So, we're going to call them matchings. Let's see an example of a matching in this graph. This graph that, in case we need to refer to it by name, we'll call G. So, again, a matching is just a set of edges that aren't adjacent to each other. So, to start off this example, let's say we take AC and FE, or EF. That will be our first matching. So this is a matching, we'll call it M1. We're gonna put a one in the subscript because we're gonna talk about a couple more matchings. So this is a matching in the graph G. It's a set of edges where no two edges in the set are adjacent to each other. So AC and EF do not share a common vertex, this is a matching. It's called a matching because it matches or pairs off vertices, right? It matches A and C, and it matches E and F. So we would say that A, C, E, and F are matched by this matching, whereas D and B are unmatched or not matched under this matching. Now let's quickly talk about the distinction of matchings as sets versus matchings as graphs or subgraphs. So by definition, as we see, a matching is a set of edges. But it's pretty common that you might see matching or a particular matching, like M1, being used to refer to the subgraph induced by this edge set. If you're not familiar with edge-induced subgraphs, I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson I did on the topic so you can check that out. So let's just see this one uh, for an example. This is the pre pretty common notation for edge-induced subgraphs. The graph, G, and then square brackets. Inside the square brackets, we put the edge set that is inducing the subgraph. So this is the subgraph of G induced by the matching M1. All this is, it's pretty simple, all this is is the subgraph that contains the edges in the matching as well as their incident vertices. So in this example, the 
subgraph of G induced by the matching M1 is this graph here. It just has the edges of M1 as well as their incident vertices. That is the subgraph of G induced by that matching. And so that's what is meant if you're reading a paper or a textbook that introduces a matching and then starts talking about that matching as a graph. What's being talked about is the graph created by taking the edges of the matching and their incident vertices. So I think it's pretty straightforward. Clearly they're very strongly related, this graph and this matching. You just take the edges of the matching as well as the incident vertices and there's your subgraph that you might just get lazy and call M1. It's kind of lazy, but I think it's pretty clear. So I'll go ahead and erase this. Hopefully you can't hear the, the traffic out there. Sounds like somebody's having a, a race, some sort of race with some loud vehicles. All right, now let's go ahead and redraw our original graph and we can talk about some special types of matchings that you might be interested in. Here we go. Relabel the vertices, A, B, C, D. Let me rewrite that B because that's kind of ugly. Almost looked like a music note. There is our B. That's not much better, but it's gonna have to do. All right, there's our graph. So this matching M1 is a non-maximal matching. A lot of you who've watched other graph theory lessons or studied graph theory a little bit probably know what this means. So this is a non-maximal matching because it's a proper subset of another matching in this graph G. As in, there's an edge we could add to this matching in order to get a bigger matching. So let's see that. Let's demonstrate it. This is gonna be our maximal matching, M2. We're gonna start off by taking the edges that are in our previous matching. And I said that this is a non-maximal matching which means we should be able to add another edge and get a matching with more edges. Clearly, we can't add the edge AB because it shares a vertex with AC, which is already in our matching. For the same reason, we can't add the edge CD because it shares a vertex with AC, and we also can't add the edge DE, but we can add the edge BD. So let's add that to our matching. BD, and then, Go ahead and highlight that with the beautiful orange marker. Look at that. So this now, this matching M2, this is a maximal matching in the graph G. It is not a proper subgraph of any other, or excuse me, it's not a proper subset of any other matching. There's clearly, we can't include any of these other edges in order to get a uh, bigger matching because all of these other edges are, or they all share a common vertex with at least one of these edges already in the matching. So we can't increase the cardinality of this matching by including any other edge. Now, as it turns out, this matching M2 is also a maximum matching in our graph G, which means there's no other matching in the graph that has more edges than M2. There is another matching that has the same number of edges as M2. If we put A, B, C, D, and E, F in a matching, that's another matching with three edges. But there is no matching in this graph G that has more edges than M2. So M2 is called a maximum matching. Now, certainly, as is the case with other similar graph theory definitions, not every maximal matching is a maximum matching. Let's see an example, which we can do in this graph. Hopefully you can see this pink decently well. Let's say we take the edge DE, so I'll highlight that a little bit, the edge DE, and this same edge AC. That is a matching, we'll call it M3, so the matching M3 has the edge DE and the edge AC. This is a matching. It is a set of edges where no two edges in the set are adjacent to each other. It's also a maximal 
maximal, not maximum, but maximal matching. I'll just write that there to be clear. It is a maximal matching. We see that because clearly we can't include any other edge in this graph into the matching. EF, that edge shares a vertex with our edge DE. CD shares a vertex with both edges in our matching. BD shares an edge with DE. And AB shares an edge with AC. So we can't include any other edge in this matching to get a bigger matching. So this is a maximal matching. But clearly, it's not a maximum matching because it has fewer edges than this matching M2. So it's maximal, but it's not maximum. And then the last part of the question was perfect matchings and complete matchings. Quick answer, they're the same thing. And M2 is one of them. M2 is a perfect or complete matching. I guess I'll write that here. It is a perfect matching, otherwise called a complete matching. So I'll just write perfect slash complete. Perfect slash complete matching. What do you think this is? You might be able to guess a perfect or complete matching in a graph G is a matching such that every vertex in the graph, in the graph G, is incident with an edge in the matching. We see that here. A, B, C, D, E, and F. So again, this is a perfect or complete matching because it matches every vertex in the graph. Every vertex in the graph is incident with an edge in the matching. So if we wanted to draw, let's go with blue. Whoops, dropped my brown, that's okay. If we wanted to draw the subgraph of G induced by this matching, this perfect matching M2, we could do that. Let's do it here. We could split the graph into two vertex sets. One that has A, uh, B, and E, and then another vertex set that has C, D, and F. And then our perfect matching M2 matches A and C, it matches B and D, and it matches E and F. So you can see if we have a matching, a subgraph induced by the matching will be a bipartite graph. If you're familiar with bijective functions, this diagram might make it clear to you that we could also describe a matching as a bijection from one subset of the vertex set to a dis another disjoint subset of the vertex set. So don't get caught up in that if that doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, but if you're familiar with bijections, that's another way you could think about it. Now certainly not every graph is going to have a complete or perfect matching. For starters, a graph needs to have an even number of vertices to have any chance at having a complete matching. But just because it has an even number of vertices doesn't mean that it will have a complete matching. For example, this graph here has four vertices, but it's pretty easy to see it does not have a complete matching. Any edge we start off with in our matching we'll have to include this vertex here. Then we can't include any other edge in the graph because they're all incident with that vertex. Now another example, of course, of a graph without a complete matching would be any graph with an odd number of vertices. If we look at the complete graph on three vertices, this one's pretty boring as far as matchings go. We could take this edge here to be in our matching, and then we're not matching that vertex, so it's not a complete matching, but it is a maximal as well as a maximum matching. There's no bigger matching in this graph, and we also can't include any of the other two edges to increase the, uh, the number of edges in the matching. And I think that just about does it. So a matching in a graph is a set of edges where no two of the edges in the set 
are adjacent, meaning none of them share a common end vertex. A non-maximal matching is a matching that is a proper subset of another matching in the graph, which means you could increase its size, so to speak, by including another edge in the graph and end up with a bigger matching. A maxima matching in a graph is a matching such that no other matching in the graph has more edges than it. So another way to say it would be that a maximum matching has as many or more edges than any other matching in the graph. Remember we had this example here of a matching that was maximal, but it wasn't maximum. And then a perfect or complete matching in a graph is a matching such that every vertex in the graph is incident with one edge in the matching. So a perfect matching matches every vertex in the graph. And we call them matchings because they match vertices. Our matching M2 matches A and C, it matches B and D, and it matches E and F. And remember, like I said earlier, this is not the only maximum matching in this graph. And it's also not the only perfect matching in the graph. We could have also had the edge AB, the edge CD, and the edge EF. That would be another matching with cardinality 3, and it's also a perfect matching. It matches every vertex in the graph. And that'll do it. So I hope this video helped you understand matchings, complete matchings, perfect matchings, and matchings as subgraphs as well. Remember that a, uh, if we talk about a matching as a graph, what we're really talking about is the subgraph induced by that matching. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I'm going to go out to eat and pick up some groceries. I will see you in a couple days. Need a needle in my eye What's stopping me The bottom of me I lift the weight that's drowning me So I can rise up to the sea I wasted half my breath on her She's not wasting her breath on me Rise like a phoenix from the ash My lungs filled to capacity With smoke from my past stacking up These smokestacks don't get high enough And all that's one will set the sun When kingdom comes down from the sky